Hello everyone and welcome to this video on what is composite reliability. My name is Christian Geiser, I'm an instructor with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. I usually talk about multivariate statistical methods including factor analysis, structural equation modeling, multi-level analysis and latent class modeling. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to check out the description for additional resources, including workshops that I offer through Quantfish. Many people are confused about reliability and composite reliability. So what is reliability and what is composite reliability? Those questions I want to address here on a conceptual level in this video. So let's start with the question of what is Reliability. Reliability is a term that is defined in classical test theory. Classical test theory is a measurement theory that primarily addresses the measurement error questions in psychological and other types of social science measurements. So you could also say that classical test theory is a measurement error theory or a test about score or a, a theory about score reliability. In classical test theory, we have the concept of a true score variable. A true score variable is the variable that represents the scores that were that as if they were measured without measurement error, as opposed to the observed scores that we measure with our tests and questionnaires, the true score only captures true inter-individual differences between people and leaves out the measurement error portion. And so in classical test theory, we have measurement models that we can derive from the theory that allow us to estimate true score variance and measurement error variance in our observed test scores. And then classical test theory defines reliability as the ratio of true score variance divided by total observed test score variance. So once we estimate the true score variance and the error variance portion, then we can come up with this reliability index. The variance component in the denominator is the sum of true score and error variance. And so that way we can then estimate reliability. Now, what is the difference between reliability or simple reliability and composite reliability. For that, it's useful to look at uh, this topic from the perspective of confirmatory factor analysis. So in confirmatory factor analysis, we can specify measurement models of classical test theory. For example, a single factor congeneric measurement model as you can see here for a math test. So let's say we have a math test that consists of four different subscales that are supposed to measure a unidimensional construct of math ability. So we can fit a single factor confirmatory factor analysis model to the data to these four subscales of our math test. And now as part of this model, we obtain a model fit test so we can test whether that unidimensional structure fits this set of four subscales. And so let's assume that a single factor model here fits well, then with this model, we can estimate standardized factor loadings. Standardized factor loadings in this model are interpreted like correlations between each variable and the underlying latent variable or true score. So this is a true score model where the factor math represents the common true score that is shared between those four variables. And so that would mean then, for example, that the correlation between the first math subscale and the underlying true score variable is 0.74. So that's a relatively strong correlation indicating that math one, that the observed variable is strongly related to the underlying latent true score variable that it is supposed to measure. And you can see that the other correlations are 0 0.71, 0 0.8, and 0 0.65. Now, according to classical test theory, reliability is not only equal to the ratio of true score variance to total variance, but it's also equal to the squared correlation between the observed or measured variable 
and the underlying latent true score variable. Therefore, we can use the squared standardized loadings from the single factor congeneric measurement model to estimate the reliability of each of the subscales. And so here I did this conveniently in the JASP software, which is a free software program that you can download from the internet. It's very convenient, it is point and click, and it uses the Lavan package from the R software to estimate factor models such as this confirmatory factor model. I have a separate video on how to estimate such models with JASP on this channel, so check that out as well. And so I fit this model to my math subscales in JASP and I got the following R squared table from that program. So JASP calculates not only the standardized loadings for your factor model, but also gives you the standardized loading squared, which is equal to R squared or reliability according to classical test theory. And so here you can see the squared standardized factor loadings in this table. And so you can see they range between 0.42 and 0.65, so excuse me, 0.64. So between 42% of the variance and 64% of the variance in the observed math test scores represents true score variance. So that's not super amazing. So that's not really good reliability when um, still there's a pretty large amount of error variance. For example, in the math four subscale, more than half, so 58% of the variance in math four would be error variance. And at most, 64% here would be true score variance as was seen for math three, the scale with the highest standardized loading. So those are the individual reliabilities for those four subscales. Now, typically when we have a test that consists of different components, so in this case, four subscales, we are not only interested in the reliabilities of each subscale, or maybe not so much at all, but really what we care about is the reliability of the composite, meaning the reliability of the aggregate of those four subscales taken together. Because in typical applications of this math test, we would use an overall score. So we would, for example, to evaluate students' math achievement, we would not use one of the subscales, and here definitely not because they're not very reliable, but what we would use instead is the composite score or sum score of those four scales combined. And that's where composite reliability comes into play because not only do we want to estimate those individual reliabilities, as seen here, but also we would like to know if we aggregated those four math subscales into an overall sum score, what would be the reliability of the sum score? And now, obviously, the reliability of the sum score is not simply the sum of these R squared values that you can see it doesn't make sense because those, this would be a value above one, so more than 100%, it doesn't make sense. So it's not totally trivial to calculate the reliability of the sum, and that's where these composite reliability coefficients come into play. And so in JASP, for example, you can um, also request that composite reliability be output and specifically JASP under the confirmatory factor analysis option will give you coefficient omega as well as coefficient alpha, so Cronbach's alpha, which you may know or may have heard of from SPSS or from papers that you may have read. And so for a congeneric measurement model such as this one here, where you can have different loadings between the indicators in an unstandardized solution of this factor model, coefficient omega is more appropriate than coefficient alpha. Coefficient alpha is for a measurement model with equal loadings. And so that would mean tau equivalence in terms of classical test theory or essential tau equivalence. However, this measurement model here is only congeneric, meaning the loadings can differ 
between variables. And in that case, coefficient alpha tends to underestimate the reliability of the sum, as you can see here. So alpha is a little bit smaller, 0.8, as compared to omega, which is equal to 0.82. So omega is a more appropriate reliability index for this application because this is a congeneric measurement model with different factor loadings. And so I'm not showing you the formulas here for calculating these because they are complicated, but that's what so say programs like JSP and SPSS and others will give you at, uh, omega and alpha as composite reliability. And what it means is this is the reliability of those four scales combined into an overall sum score under the assumption that a single factor model fits these data, which here is the case. So this model fits the data well, and therefore we can safely interpret those loadings, those R squared values, and also those composite reliability coefficients, omega and alpha. Now, how is this interpreted? You can see they are quite a bit higher than the individual reliabilities, which is exactly what we expect because the reliability of a composite is always by definition greater than the reliability of the components unless, unless the components have zero reliability. But the composite always has a higher reliability because the test is longer. A composite is longer than those individual parts and the longer uh, you make a test, so say under certain assumptions of course, the longer the test, the higher the reliability because there are more, there's more opportunity for errors of measurement to average out. This is well known for example also from the Spearman-Brown formula from classical test theory for tau parallel measures. And so unless you make the test so long that individuals will no longer be willing to take it, longer tests have higher reliabilities. And so this is what we see here. So the entire test, if we use those four subscales combined, has 82% true score variance. And that's really good. So this means only 18% error variance in the, in the composite according to omega and coefficient alpha is similar, just a little bit smaller because it assumes equal loadings, which here is not acceptable for this model. So this shows you a composite has higher reliability and you can estimate this composite as part of a confirmatory factor analysis, single factor, model in, for example, JASP. Now, again, why are there different composite reliability indices? The reason is that in classical test theory, we have different types of measurement models. The congeneric measurement model with different factor loadings is only one model. It's the most general measurement model of classical test theory, but there are other more restrictive models as well. And for those different reliability coefficients, different composite reliability coefficients are used. So specifically, the most restrictive measurement models of classical test theory are the essentially and strictly parallel measurement models where we have equal loadings and equal error variances. And so for these models, we can use a simpler formula for composite reliability, which is the Spearman-Brown formula. So for those cases it's very simple because the loadings are equal, the error variances are equal, and then you use a very simple Spearman-Brown um, aggregation formula for composite reliability. The next uh, less restrictive measurement model is the tau equivalent and or the essentially tau equivalent measurement model where the requirement of equal error variances is dropped. So you only have equal loadings anymore, not equal error variances. And then you have an essentially or strictly tau equivalent model depending on the uh, mean structure or intercept specification in that model. And so for essentially and strictly tau equivalent measures, Cronbach's alpha is appropriate. And so therefore, that's also a frequent source of confusion because coefficient alpha is often used for all kinds of situations, even when you don't test a single factor model, even when the measures are not tau equivalent, when you have a multi-dimensional scale, and then people are surprised that the interpretation of alpha is not useful or they find that 
um, something is off and it doesn't make sense. So really Cronbach's alpha is appropriate only under the assumption that the measures are unidimensional, that they measure a single factor and that the measures have equal factor loadings. Otherwise you shouldn't use Cronbach's alpha. For congeneric measures where we still assume that they're unidimensional as we've seen but where we drop the assumption of equal factor loading so where the measures can have different factor loadings we use for example McDonald's Omega as a common composite reliability index. Now one last thing that I want to show you is where you can find those in SPSS because that's a common program that we use and actually in SPSS you can get all of these when you go to analyze scale and then reliability analysis you can find then a dialog window where you can move your subscale scores into the uh, little window on the right hand side under items and then in the drop down menu for model you can find Cronbach's alpha you can find McDonald's Omega and you can also find parallel and strict parallel which you would use to get the Spearman Brown composite reliability and you can also test whether your um, measures are parallel or strictly parallel under these options here in SPSS but there are also other programs that allow you to compute composite reliability indices as we've seen JASP gives you alpha and gives you omega under the confirmatory factor analysis option and also JASP has other options for composite reliability and that's a free program where you can just simply download it from the internet. I hope you found this video useful to learn more about reliability and also about composite reliability. If you did, then please consider subscribing to this channel. Don't forget to check out the description for additional resources, including courses on psychometrics that I offer through uh, Quantfish. And I'll see you next time.